The army veterans are fighting a new enemy. The need for a shelter and access to health services. According to the Samaritan's charity, most veterans are now suffering from post-traumatic disorder. It's also been reported that veterans often feel disadvantaged compared to other citizens in accessing the provision of public services. Today, I meet Major Anselm from the Catrick Garrison, and he tells me more about the transition program and some of the challenges ex-forces personnel face when they leave the army. Uh, the main purpose of the transition officer is to make sure that soldiers are now briefed <clears throat> not about the inevitable return to civilian life in the last few years of service, but to make sure that soldiers are planning for that inevitable return from the moment they finished their phase one training. So that's a very important role and a completely uh, new concept in so far as trying to get people to understand, particularly service personnel, that they have to plan for that return and not simply just enjoy service life and then at the end of 22 years colour service, most soldiers who serve that long uh, find themselves plonked back in civilian life. Well the first thing is we, we, we've broken that down into five pillars of support, that be education, employment, health, housing and welfare. And throughout their military career, we offer support by way of their education. A lot of the courses that soldiers now do, regardless of their trade, will link into civilian recognised qualifications. Uh, so through their education, we're trying to ensure that they therefore have greater employability once they actually leave the service. So that's two of the pillars linked together. Apart from standard health briefs and support given to soldiers should they be injured, uh, the health uh, mainly on the transition point is to make sure that soldiers actually register with their GP and that's very important. But we do then find at this point that once soldiers have actually left the service they are back as a civilian and it is up to them to actually do that. So there is a, a slight grey area over that aspect. And on the housing front, we're very keen to get soldiers now to engage in purchasing their own home. And we've been running uh, over the last 18 months the Forces Help to Buy programme, which has seen around 3,000 Forces personnel actually purchase their own houses. And that carries on for another 18 months and will be reviewed at the end of that. And finally, on the welfare side, within the units, uh, soldiers will, will be given support with a variety of concerns that may arise and then once they actually leave service uh, the dedicated Ministry of Defence uh, Department is UK veterans and service personnel once they've left can always phone there and then support will be provided through the network of charities that support such as the Royal British Legion or Help for Heroes SAFA, okay. pensions committees uh, to ensure that information is transferred between each other and as I mentioned before in terms of the health concerns that we have once a soldier actually leaves it's then up to that individual to register with the general practitioner and in the same way once a soldier has actually left service we no longer have any controls over that individual and that's why we need a support base of uh, the councils and charities uh, to support those soldiers that actually do need that but at we should point out really that between 80 and 90 percent of service leavers manage that transition relatively well and go straight into employment or are in, with, in employment within six months. The challenges that our ex-service personnel face when they leave the forces is uh, arranging their future housing. Um, unfortunately we still get some soldiers that don't take the opportunity to purchase their own home so using forces help to buy or other government initiatives uh, and therefore they need to be made aware of the support that is available to them for example through Kirkley's uh, local authority and the, the uh, armed forces covenant affords them uh, the guarantee that they won't be disadvantaged so although they're not put to the top of a list they are not disadvantaged through service so that's an important message really for them to make sure that if they, if they do require that, that they get in touch with the local authority, make their status as ex-serving members known, and then they can benefit from all the benefits incorporated in the Armed Forces Community Covenant.
Uh, X-Forces personnel on the health front should make every effort to make sure that they do register with their local general practitioner as soon as they, they've ascertained where they're going to live. And what's really important there is there is within that form uh, a declaration that they are X-Forces personnel and they should make sure that that, that that is ticked and that the general practitioner is aware of that. Um, if they do find, having left service, that they, they have concerns or they might be suffering from any post-traumatic stress disorder, they should really pop in at the earliest opportunity and seek support from the general practitioner. Worked within that are a, a variety of support charities that help uh, the NHS look after ex-service personnel or their families affected by any sort of trauma suffered through service so they are fully encouraged to do that and benefit from the excellent service that's available. As the transition office it's an incredibly varied role and every single pillar that we deal with employment, education, health, housing and welfare is intricate in that I will visit units here what we call behind the wire sort of second line in the education centres and in our career transition partnership resettlement centre here at Catterick and then out in the community uh, in the Armed Forces Covenant world and seeing the support provided by um, our charity welfare organisations. So it spans an awful lot and in, its, uh, in that way it's uh, incredibly challenging and rewarding when we get some results. In. Well in my first week of starting the job, we came across a, a homeless soldier who was living rough in his vehicle. Um, and it, it was through liaison with uh, SAFA, in this case in the Middlesbrough area. And we were able to, through myself, ensure that he had accommodation at Beacon House up here in Catterick. And some welfare support and counselling could be put in place in order to, to find out why he was living homeless and what sort of supports mechanisms would be needed to get him integrated back into society. Of course this community covenant is a really important step in uh, cementing that relationship between the military's real life support, its firm based plans under the new Alpha 2020 um, and building those relationships so that uh, when it becomes necessary to, to support soldiers transiting from the army um, those contacts are already established and working and it, and it works really well with that relationship. The first point of call is to ring UK veterans and they'll be signposted through to the relevant charity or local authority and they'll offer the ongoing support from there. Kirklees Council is committed to identify armed forces personnel and veterans within the borough and put in place an action plan on key issues. The scheme aim is to encourage local services to offer support to local veterans and their families in areas like health issues, housing, education that can lead to employability and discount cards. A quarter of the army's infantry are recruited here in the north, but there is a concern over people making the change from military to civilian life. Part of the government covenant, Kirklees Council have teamed up with Veterans UK to ensure a smooth transition. Bikachi Katenga for KLTV.